Hello and welcome back to Car Lube. This is the 11th episode of E30 M3 Recreation, with the work being carried out by Spencer, owner of BMP Conversions. Link to the previous episodes on the screen and his contact details are in the description below. In this episode, Spencer, the expert on all things BMW, has applied some paint to the car and we'll get a full explanation of the progress so far. You might remember from the previous episodes that E30 had various rust spots that needed to be dealt with, one of which we can see right here, which has now been repaired. Now over to Spencer. This week's video update on the E30 S54 M3 project. I just had to make this bracket. As you can see, this bracket was absolutely rotted away. There's no way I'm welding that back on. That bracket comes from up here where I put a plate in, so you can see that that goes on there like that. That actually holds a clear bottle between them two brackets. So it's like an expansion tank. You can see an expansion tank on the filler neck. That's what's held there. Um, so that's got to go back. As you know, I've totally removed the under sealer off this inner wheel arch. The reason for that is that when I glue this inner wheel arch all the way along this joint, along there, if I used a wire wheel in here and it caught or ground or bit and threw me, it could have damaged the carbon fibre wheel arch. So I want to remove this all so that we didn't have to touch it anywhere near there once the carbon fibre part is fitted. Obviously I've primed all these joints. You can see I've rust killed it, all the rust has gone black now. See all them areas that all, all rust kill everywhere? This rear wheel arch is done nearly. And, uh, and I also want to paint the inside of the rear quarter all the way around where this carbon fiber item meets the actual metal work. And that's just so that the metal works protected with a layer of paint. Because we won't be welding this, so as the, the water condensation runs down the inside of the window frame, um, it will come down to the very top of the rear quarter and the wheel arch and if there's bare metal there usually it would rot the arch out from the inside out. If we, if we coat this with paint now and then use glue on this as well there's no rust area at all. I've got to remove the under sealer off this side so today remove the under sealer off this side I've got to fit our new sunroof drains which is what these are you can see the guy cut through them. And I've got one last area of rust to deal with behind that sill piece. So I've cut the outer sill off there. You can see that, that that welds back on once I've repaired this rust in here. As you can see, we're actually fitting carbon fibre wheel arches. A couple of years ago, I decided to mould them. Good job I did, because obviously they've gone discontinued now. So I now remake the, the inner wheel arches in carbon fibre. This is actually a good thing, to be quite honest, because on these bodies of these cars, no matter how good you are or how much glue you use sealant, you would never ever be able to make the wheel arch area as waterproof as the original M3 was. BMW, when they do it, they actually paint and spot weld both surfaces together all the way around the wheel arch, so all the way around this area, crimped while they're spot welded. And then panel sealer is also put in between that joint, so as they're squeezed together, the panel sealer squeezes out, spot weld happens, and they're also glued all the way around as well, all the way around on the inside. So this outer panel, has glue attached to it, um, which comes all the way up around the actual fuel filler neck and then all the way around the arch. Um, so that happens on both sides with the original metal panels. And obviously, as the car condensates, which all cars do, every single car condensates whilst you're using it. Uh, the metal being cold, um, you heat the car up, condensation appears in the roof itself. What actually happens then is the condensation will actually work its way down the C-pillar and come along the inside of the rear quarter to the tops of the rear wheel arches. As you can see inside this wheel arch, as it would condensate, you can imagine the condensation running down the inside here, coming down the back of the rear quarter panel, 
and then it meets the outer arch where this inner arch actually meets the lip of the outer arch. Now, if you spot weld any body shop, if they spot weld the new panel on and uh, you know use weld through primer, but you're still going to have an area, a surface area where water can get in between the rear quarter panel and the uh, outer in a tub they're called so there's a, a rust issue so within sort of four or five years you'll actually start to have surface rust appearing from the inside of your arch so the rust will work its way outwards and your wheel arch will just start to rust so no matter how good you are and how good a repair you do you will never ever stop the rust from happening if you use a metal rear in a tub obviously what i'm doing on this car and because we're going to down the road of using carbon fiber arches is that I can actually bond this whole entire arch in all the way around so I can use glue all the way around on both surfaces I am going to uh, remove the top lip so this lip is going to be removed all the way around to about here again where the return comes down the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to roll the steel arch so once I've welded the rear quarter on I'm going to get a, uh, an arch roller and roll the arch upwards, back on itself. Obviously use sealant in that area. I'm doing that so he can obviously run wider wheels. There isn't a limit to the wheel he can run because we haven't left the arch as it is. So in the factory, from the factory, this lip all the way around from about there to about here was originally rolled up. If I don't cut that lip off that carbon fibre inner wheel arch, that will leave an area which I can't roll. I can't roll the steel item up because the carbon fibre will crack and break. So we're giving this as, as much utmost protection as we possibly can on the actual car itself to stop further rust issues in the, in the future. What I've done is you can see I've actually painted the inside of all the wheel arches, both sides, all the way down and I've also painted each surface where the carbon fiber arch will be bonded onto the car. We've totally rust killed the inner arches as you can see. Everything is freshly painted all the way around. Um, so the surface I'm, I'm talking about is this surface which would have originally where the spot welds would have been for the inner arch to be attached to. That is where the glue joint is and again that's fully painted so when we glue that carbon fiber arch on the actual rust issue is completely taken away um, i can't get to remove the under sealer out of the the shock uh, area until obviously the car's fully welded and off the jig but that's the last little area to do so you can see again if I just shoot across there, you can see the inside of the rear quarter panel itself is fully painted. When I come to weld everything up and glue the arches in, once I glue those arches in, providing the paint is never damaged or cracked in any way, those rear arches should never rust out like all the other ones on the original cars. Um, so all the original E30s have that rust issue purely because the water can penetrate there is, there is sealant, like I said, there is sealant all the way around. But the water can penetrate and sit in the two pieces of steel, the outer arch where it meets the actual inner tub. The water sits in between those two layers and causes rust issue. Again, what we've done inside the arch is fully stripped it back to bare metal, rust killed, primed, painted, every surface inside there. The next stage will be remove the under sealer on the shock mounts, do exactly the same principle. Um, once that's done, I will then key up the whole entire arches, under seal on top of the paint. Then the car will then go onto the spit, have the rest of the under sealer removed. We will apply a full coat of paint to the whole underside of the, the car. Then it will go off to the body shop again, keyed up, apply a brand new layer of under sealer, then paint on top of the under sealer. So, and it sounds excessive, but this car, what we're trying to do is remove every single rust issue on this car, which it would have had from factory. So it's the same principle with the battery tray. Battery tray is a very, very common area to rust. 
As you can see, I make a carbon fiber uh, replacement for the E30 M3 pre-facelift. Um, they're all Kevlar on the back side of them as well, so everything's sort of chip resistant. These items will uh, go in there, go in there fully. Um, you know, once they're once they're in there, we will fully seam seal it and and bond the whole surface in all the way around. Every panel has been fully stripped back to so this black this black paint that BMW basically put on there. That's like an edge primer. Now that that isn't weld through. So on every surface that you're going to apply. Uh, a, a spot weld or or a plug weld um, I do I do plug welds along the bottom of the sill purely because I think that it's a better weld to be quite honest it's a stronger joint you can see um, my gaps along the sills these are brand new sills fitted um, there we go all the way front to back the sills are, the gaps are actually perfect uh, measured them with the vernier gauge the door gap is lovely you can see um, how, how nice the side of the car is looking actually. The, the, sill, the rear quarter of this side here, it's sitting just a little bit low because I haven't got a screw or a bolt in there to hold it up at the minute, but you can see once it's held up and once this, the welds happen, um, it will be perfectly in line. Again, so every, uh, every spot weld joint has been fully stripped back to bare metal anywhere which we're welding. Uh, so that the uh, the current of the welder, both sides, so this side, the inside, inside of the inner panel and the very inside of the car, have had weld through primer put on. We'll apply brand new spot welds using a proper spot weld tool all the way around the car. And like I say, plug the, the holes along the bottom of the sills purely because I prefer a plug weld on them areas than a spot weld. All right, so you can see I'm ready to, to plug away. I will apply the spot welder along these, these areas just to give it more of a factory look. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're very, very close now. Uh, all the panels are on for the last time. You can see I've fully unpicked all the original braze joints. So the roof skin, not many people know this, but the roof skin on the C pillars and A pillars actually have a step down in them so that that was pressed in from factory and they step down the roof skin steps down underneath the c pillar and the a pillar on the car then the rear quarter basically meets up to it you bolt it down cramp it down and it's a braze joint you basically heat the panel up and braze weld into it allow the braze and that braze weld runs underneath the panel and fills this gap up and then you just file it down nice and smooth you know end up with a nice nice panel joint it's basically to give this panel rigidity so there's no flex and movement between the two panels it makes the body stronger um, it's like a fully welded joint but a braze joint can be unpicked to be able to replace the, the rear quarter at any time so yeah that's progress so far obviously these rear quarter panels at the minute are bolted on um, there is one bolt at the, min at the bottom which goes through the bush eyelet mounts. You can see the bush eyelet mounts. There we go. I put a bolt through there. That holds all three panels dead in line. Again, you can see all my plug welds ready to go along the bottom of the sill. Okay, the door gaps and the, the lower door gap all line up. All the gaps are nice. The, the, the panels are just bolted on at the minute. Once I've fed them in, allow them to sit in their natural position, and then I can start to pilot haul the arches themselves. I can then remove, once the, the arches are pilot hauled, I can then remove the, the rear quarter panel, glue these items onto the inner tub, which is that white part there. Once they're glued on, I can then apply my glue to the actual outer tub and the rear quarter panel, offer the rear quarter panel on for the last time, and then start to weld the whole panel on. So there's a few more areas that I need to just clean up before I do this. There are areas like the wheel well at the back here, purely because we're removing every piece of undersealer on the car from front to back and renewing it, brand new paint. These are areas like this wheel well and along the chassis rail. 
up here that you won't be able to get to with any kind of wire wheel and especially when the carbon fiber tray is in here you don't want to be going near that with a, a grinder with a wire wheel on so one little jolt and you're through the battery tray taking them back to bare metal just under here once the back panel goes on you wouldn't have access to get anything up between there to get the, the undersealer off. So uh, forward thinking, get all that removed before we put the back panel on. Once the back panel on, it is literally ready to weld. So very close within the next week or so, this car will be fully welded up off the jig onto the spit. Thank you, Spencer. Lots of information to digest in this episode. And thank you to all of you for watching. See you on the next episode. Good morning and welcome to another episode of Car Lube. I am on my way today to a small village show which promises some spectacular cars. Uh, it's in Walmer Green and they have it once a year I believe so hopefully you'll enjoy the content from today. I'm taking the M3, I'm meeting up with my, uh, my friend Adam.